Let's talk the housing market for a minute this morning because Bruce Dodd from Chat Mortgage cleared his calendar to spend a little bit of time with us this morning. Uh, and he said, Julie, ask me whatever you want to about the housing market. Just don't ask me about macrame. So deal. I won't do that, okay? Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> I don't even think I could spell macrame. I listen, I threw that in there because I was going to say what a fun person you are to talk to. Bruce is just kind of this man who knows a little bit about, or a lot of bit, really, about an awful lot of things, so that when you find yourself talking mortgages with you, Bruce, probably pretty quickly the conversation can go to other points of interest, and I think that's important for people to know. You're a real human being. Sure. Well, we try to, we try to make the process as enjoyable as possible, and, and the reality of it is, part of that is people think the mortgage process is super hard, uh, but for most people, it's really straightforward. So we can get your mortgage done, we can figure out, we can give you a bunch of options, and then maybe we can talk about something else that's more interesting. I guess what also is pretty straightforward, because you've been a part of our show for a long time, and your philosophy has not ever changed, and that is that it's really always a good investment to own real estate. And so when we had this conversation five years ago, people might have thought, yeah, but I'm not quite ready. If they had bought, their investment would have risen in value. The same is gonna be true today, even though those interest rates are higher. Yeah, interest rates are high, but we're seeing property values continue to move up. And um, across the country, you're seeing that part of the news around the country gets tamped down about real estate because they use national numbers. And if you think about it, there's a lot of people moving to Tennessee from California. Well, that means in some cities in California, values have gone down. Right. But so when you look at national numbers, but when you look at things moving up right here in Chattanooga, you know, we're clicking along. If you look at 20 years prior to the pandemic, properties went up by about 4% a year. If you look at during the pandemic, properties went up double digit. And so real estate appreciation is pretty consistent. And it kind of makes sense because when you look at the issue we're having right now, there's just not enough homes for the people that want to buy homes, so it keeps pushing prices up. Well, you're not seeing enough building where that's going to change, and so we'll continue to see property values go up. Okay, but I think that people hear you say that, Bruce, and they think, yeah, but if that's the math I'm up against, how do I even compete, especially for first-time home buyers? It's one thing if you own a house, and you sell it and you take the profit to then put down a new house. But if you're a first time home buyer and these prices are going up and up, that's hard for a lot of people. Well, but the reality of it is so many people right now, what is your other option? What is your other option? Um, if you're not living in somebody's basement, you're paying rent. Well, right. rent keeps moving up. Well, rents keep moving up because properties keep getting more expensive. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, is if you buy a house and let's say you put down 5% on the house or you do 3%, you put down as little as 3%. Well, that says the value of that home should go up by more than what you invested in it. Right. More wealth created from real estate than any other class of asset in the United States. And that's going to continue. You know, you mentioned the rental on Monday. We'll have a conversation with Brian Beasley, who has an insurance agency here in town and his topic is going to be the renewal uh, concerns a lot of homeowners are facing uh, where their policies are not being renewed because of, of previous claims um, often. And I would bet that that's also going to be true if you are in a rental situation because if your landlord's insurance goes up, that's just going to be passed down to you. It's just going to increase your, your cost too. Mm -hmm. And so um, it really, so the thing is, if you look at Interest rates pre-pandemic were pretty good. They, they were, say, 4.5%. Well, then interest rates went down to in the threes, and we saw property values skyrocket. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think is going to happen when, proper, when interest rates go from 7% to, like, 5%? It'll be a bigger change, but there's all these people sitting on the sidelines, so I think we'll see values move up a, a bunch. Mm. So if you're sitting on the sidelines right now saying, I want lower interest rates, well, when rates come down, what you'll gain in rate, you'll have a lower interest rate, but the house is going to be a lot more expensive. So right. the same house is going to cost you more money there. Right. 
Okay, that's a good point. And you like to remind people that they need to be looking not so much at their monthly payout on the mortgage, which of course you have to make sure it's within your means, but you're looking at the long-term payout and those interest rates will change with time. Yeah, absolutely. But when you look at people that have money in the United States, it's typically business owners or older Americans. Well, older Americans, where is that wealth coming from? Typically, it's from real estate. Mm -hmm. When you look at grandma and grandpa's wealth, a lot of it's because they have a paid for house mm -hmm. that ha they paid $50,000 for it and it's now worth 400. So let's suppose somebody says, okay, this is my time. This weekend, I'm gonna get my ducks in a row and I'm gonna see about buying a house. When they contact you, what do they need to bring to the table, so to speak? Most of the time, just your knowledge. Because for most people, it's pretty straightforward. Almost everybody anymore has an employee portal that has, you can download every pay stub you ever had. Well, we just need the last two. And we just need a couple W-2s. We just, so the answer is kind of two for everything, but typically we're gonna need two years W-2s, last two pay stubs and two months bank statements. Okay. All of that stuff for almost everybody you could just download. It's not just that they're giving you, you're gonna give in return because one of the things that you give your clients is this guarantee really that when they go to present an offer on a home, uh, that offer is almost as good as a cash offer. Absolutely, absolutely. Because we go ahead and do the work on the front end. We're gonna get all your stuff up front. We're gonna make sure you're shopping with 100% assurance. You know that you can do the transaction. You're already approved. We just have to approve the house. And before I let you run, um, since we have been talking about people who would be selling a home and buying another one potentially, sometimes those can be the people who get caught the most by surprise because the, the, some of the things that they think they've got covered when they go through the process with you, they find out their finances might need a little bit of tweaking here. And yeah, there. so if you're thinking about selling your house, you probably just want to, first of all, take a look, talk to, talk to us, and let's just make sure that there's not going to be any roadblocks for the next purchase. It's information you get, it doesn't cost you anything. But if you're making a business decision, it's a bad idea to make business decisions based on half the equation. Right. You, if you're gonna sell a house and you're gonna buy a house, you need not just to know how much is your house, house worth, you know, what is the transaction gonna look like for me when I buy a house? You need both those pieces of information before you decide, hey, we're selling our house. Okay, well, let me give them this information. That's how to get in touch with you. So it's Chat Mortgage on East Brainerd Road. He'll be happy to talk to you there in the office. If you want to do it by phone or by Zoom, he can do that too. 591-9801 is the phone number and online. It's chatmortgage.com. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Talk to you soon.